everyone, hello everyone and welcome, welcome to our Sciences Po live broadcast dedicated to the Paris School of International Affairs, also known as PSIA. My name is Adrien Kenet and I serve as marketing and recruitment manager at Sciences Po. I am truly delighted that so many of you are able to be with us today. So whichever part of the world you are connected from, welcome to you all and thank you for being with us today. We are going to be together for about 30 minutes to give you the most up-to-date information on the Paris School of International Affairs. To do so, several guests are with me today. By my side in this studio, Marc Maloney, Executive Director of PSIA. Marc, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having us. Delighted to be here. We also have four students and graduates who are with us remotely four students and graduates, not only from four different master's programs at PSIA, but from four different countries and four different continents, showing how international, truly international PSIA is. We'll get back to our students and graduates in a few seconds. To all viewers who are watching us live on YouTube today, should you have any questions at this point, you can start ask your questions in the chat module of our YouTube live. Our guests will be happy to answer a few of those questions in the second part of our broadcast. Before we get started, we have a very special guest with us today. We have the privilege of having Arancha Gonzalez, Dean of the Paris School of International Affairs, who previously served as, as a Spain's Minister of Foreign Affairs. Arancha Gonzalez is live from the Davos World Economic Forum to give us welcome remarks. Arancha, thank you so much for being with us today. Would you like to give our viewers your welcome remarks? Thank you very much and thank you to all our viewers for joining us today and uh, being interested in the Paris School of International Affairs. I'm talking to you from uh, the World Economic Forum in Davos and in a way it's a metaphor for why understanding uh, international affairs is so important today. The world is changing. Whether you're interested in the economy, uh, whether you're interested uh, in climate change or environmental policies, whether you are in human rights or humanitarian affairs, uh, whether you are interested in international development, whether what makes you tick as technology, uh, whether uh, what uh, you want to study in depth is security and defense, whether you care about governance and diplomacy, the reality is that all these areas are changing. The land is shifting, alliances are changing, underpinnings uh, of the international system on which all these different areas lie is changing. Um, and this is why it's so important today uh, to get a very good grasp of uh, what are the forces that are pushing and pulling in, those, in this uh, changing world, um, understanding uh, how these different forces are seen and viewed and perceived differently depending on where you are, not only uh, geographically, of course geographically, but also uh, what uh, part uh, of society or the economy you are at. More importantly, it's not just about understanding what is happening and what, what are the things, you know, how things are changing, but also making sure that you have a say in shaping uh, this new world, this future world, that uh, we don't know exactly the shape that it will have, uh, but we need to be able uh, to shape in its own construction. So if you are passionate about uh, better understanding uh, this new world, understanding what makes it um, work. If you are eager uh, to get the knowledge, to get the, the skills, uh, because it's going to be a lot of skills, including understanding the position of all the others. Uh, and more importantly, if you want to experience firsthand, this is the Paris School of International Affairs. We are very, very proud uh, to be uh, in the top of uh, the world's uh, leading institutions uh, uh, devoted uh, to better understanding international affairs. We value the diversity 
that our students uh, bring to uh, our school and we would be more than delighted if you finally decide to join us. But before you make that decision, obviously you want to know, you want to hear and you want to hear from the horse's mouth. I want to thank uh, Mark who's uh, in Paris today um, for presenting uh, all of you uh, with uh, the details of the different programs uh, that we offer. I leave you all uh, in his very good hands and uh, I want uh, to again thank you for your interest and tell you if you are in, uh, if you're interested in uh, uh, one of the best schools in the world for global affairs, for international affairs, join us. Very much uh, looking forward uh, to welcoming you uh, in uh, Paris in Seance, if you decide to do that, but equally very eager to continue to hear from you if you decide uh, that. Uh, there may be other uh, schools that you want to look at. Uh, whatever your choice, you will always be welcome here. Thank you. Uh, back to you, colleagues in Paris. Thank you very much, Dean Gonzalez, for such enlightening welcome remarks. Now, my first question goes to Marc Maloney in the studio by my side. Marc, as a start, could you sum up in a few words in a few words, what the Paris School of International Affairs is all about. Yes. So, um, I mean, I I'm delighted uh, that, uh, that our dean was able to join from Davos and, and already give you um, a, a sense of, of what the, the key aspects of, of PSIA are. Um, the first and foremost is diversity. Um, we actually welcome students with 120 nationalities, uh, obviously from around the world, uh, to our school. And we have four um, uh, students with us, uh, students or alumni with us today, who represent uh, um, a, a sample of that from four different continents, as you said, Adrian, in, in, in your welcome. So diversity of the students is, is amazing. And of course, in studying international affairs, it's not just important to understand the different thematics of international affairs that we offer, but also to, to get the different perspectives, both from students, and then this brings me to the second point, which is the diversity of our faculty. Um, we're very fortunate to be able to draw upon both permanent faculty here at Sciences Po, permanent faculty from other um, academic institutions, both here in Europe, but actually even from further afield. Um, and indeed, half of our faculty are not academics, but practitioners, people who are or have worked at the highest level of government, business, um, and international and non-government organizations. So that combination um, of diversity of students, diversity and excellence of faculty. Um, and the third element, of course, is the fact that we're based right here in the heart of Paris, um, an English language program. In fact, all of our degree programs are offered in English. Um, and, uh, and as we'll, we'll find it a little bit further on um, in this, uh, this um, uh, uh, exchange today, um, how we can actually, students can tailor make their study um, program uh, to cater to what they want to do with their careers. Diversity is at the very heart of PSIA. Mark, could you tell us what are the master's programs that PSIA offers? Absolutely. So the dean covered almost all of them, but let me just uh, recap quickly. Um, there's a master in international security, international governance and diplomacy, environmental policy, international energy transitions, international development, human rights and humanitarian action, uh, international economic policy, and a new degree which we're just launching to start in September 2024 in technology and global affairs. So a whole diversity of subjects. What distinguishes PSIA, the Paris School of International Affairs, from other universities in, in the international affairs? Yeah, uh, great question. Um, the dean mentioned our, our high ranking, which of course is something that, uh, that we're very, very proud of. We've been ranked in the top three universities in the world for uh, international studies and politics since 2019. So it's six consecutive years we've been in the top three, um, ranked by the QS, which of course gives some external validation to what we believe and what our, certainly our students believe, um, that we are a, a particularly attractive place to, to study. And I think what makes us so unique is the fact that you don't come to PSEA to study a generic degree in international affairs. What you study are those eight degree programs that I just uh, named. So you actually are picking a specific salient field of international affairs to study. And then you can combine that major with minors, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. But it's that ability to shape and, 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 and develop your specific curriculum and to learn it not just from the academic, the more theoretical background, but to have this practical dimension to it, including some experiential dimensions, which again, we'll talk about a little bit later. Now, many of our viewers are probably prospective students, future applicants, hopefully future students at PSIA. 
what is a typical PSIA applicant? What are, are the, the students you are looking for? Yeah. So typical, I'm not sure we, 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 we look for typical. There are certain things that we look for, obviously, in the application. I'll talk about those in a minute. But, but I think um, it's important to remind, first of all, we're looking for students from around the world. And therefore, by definition, they won't be typical. They'll be obviously brilliant uh, uh, and very, very bright students. But they'll also come with a whole range of backgrounds and experiences. Academically, we actually do not have a requirement nor even a particular preference for a first degree. Whether you did your first degree in science and engineering, in arts and, and humanities, whether you did them in the social sciences um, or in some other field, we like the diversity of the academic background as well. There's only one degree program, the Master's in International Economic Policy, where we require at least some uh, um, undergraduate experience in both macroeconomics and microeconomics, but it's the only program where we have an academic requirement. What we really look for um, in, in, in our students is that, one, they obviously come with a, a strong academic background. Two, that they have some experience outside of the classroom, either through extracurricular activities, through volunteer work, through internships, or indeed through some paid work, but we don't require that, but something that shows the experience and therefore your commitment to um, a, a career later on in a particular field that's relevant to the program you want to study. Obviously, a clear understanding of the program you want to study, and most importantly, what your motivation is to study with us, where you want to it that degree program to take you. So one thing you viewers want to have in mind is that PSIA welcomes students from all over the world and from all academic backgrounds. Thank you very much, Mark. Now, let's have a word with Zingshen. Zingshen, thank you very much for being with us. You are currently enrolled in the Master in International Development. You are originally from China. What made you choose PSIA's Master in International Development? Okay, thank you so much for having me and thank you for the question. So um, I did a double bachelor degree in French and international relations, which naturally leads me to um, Sciences Po Paris, the best university of political science in Francophone countries. And what's more, I met a lot of um, Sciences Po alumni in my uh, bachelor universities in China. Their critical thinking, their practice focused teaching methods and their serious attitude towards academia and works they all make me believe that Sciences Po will provide a very high quality um, education. And apart from that, um, SIA program itself attracted me a lot since it's very professional oriented and focusing on learning with practice. Um, I really like the, the idea of having um, the internship in the third semester, which can really enrich my experience since I uh, didn't have full time working experience before. And also this internship will make me more targeted, critical, and thoughtful um, during my fourth semester. You mentioned internships. You are currently doing a gap year, which is an academic year taken by a student as a break between year one and year two of the master's. Uh, you are currently in Ivory Coast uh, doing an internship in Abidjan, and you are going to start another internship, if I'm right, if I'm right in, in Vienna at the United Nations industrial development organization. Could you tell us a little bit more about those professional experiences? Yes, sure. Uh, so my plan for the gap year was to take internships about sustainable development in both Africa and in Europe and in international organizations and private sector. So that's why I chose my first internship here in Abidjan. Um, I'm still in Abidjan now doing for this internship. It's in a beta startup. Um, in Gautiloir. And I'm working on the management and coordination of an AI forest monitoring project. And to be more specific, my job here is to, um, to work on partnership building, fundraising, and conduct market research. And at the meantime, I'm so excited, excited that here I'm proposing design and creating a real NGO for the company to build up data project for um, social and environmental impact. And in this part, I think the M1 courses in Sciences Po really equipped me very well um, with essentials, ability and knowledge for this job, such as project management, um, sustainable, sustainable finance, and so on. And after this internship, as you said, uh, I will start my next one in February in Unido, in Vienna. 
and I will assist the project management of the HCFC phase-up um, plan, which is an ozone protection plan under Montreal Protocol. So I will still work on the project in um, sub-Saharan Africa, but I'm just moving from grassroots to a global perspective. So I think that will complement my knowledge in develop, development area. And final question, Zingshen. Looking back at year one at PSIA, did you have a favorite class last year during your first year of master's at the Paris School of International Affairs? Yes, yes, actually a lot. And if I have to mention one, one of my favorite classes is social innovation and um, entrepreneurship from Céline Lyon. And we had a, on the class, we had one real cases every session to better understand the theories and tools. And since we only have 15 uh, students in the class, we have many opportunities to discuss our ideas. And most interestingly, we form a group of four to follow an entrepreneur throughout the semester and make pro proposition to their difficulties in their business. For example, my group was to help an entrepreneur analyze uh, Linen's value chain and propose a sustainable development strategy for her business. And from this course, I saw a dynamic development pathway in entrepreneurship. And also to some extent, it led me to my current internship in this startup. Thank you so much, Zing Sen. Sounds fascinating. Thank you for your testimonial. Now back to studio with Marc Maloney. Marc, all master's students at Sciences Po study on the Paris campus. A new campus was inaugurated in 2022. Could you give us a word about this new campus? Yeah, ab absolutely, Adrian. Uh, uh, delighted to do so. Um, I mean, I'm, I have to say I'm desperately envious of the students who are not just at PSIA, but obviously at Sciences Po. The fact that they study in uh, these particularly nice um, uh, buildings and, and, and campus, as you said, uh, um, this studio, which is in the midst of that, that campus, um, uh, I think the biggest advantage of it is it's right in the heart of Paris. Um, it's in the heart of Paris, um, and yet you feel very protected. Um, the way that it's been designed is that you have outer walls which uh, um, uh, uh, insulate you from the, the hustle and bustle and the noise of the big city, um, and you find yourself in these very quiet, very green spaces, which are absolutely conducive for students to meet, um, to discuss uh, um, a lot of classes, um, small classrooms, as uh, I was just mentioned. Um, most of the classes at PSEA are seminar classes, so uh, on average around 20 students in a class, a little bit more, a little bit less, um, but we try to have that, and, and this campus really allows for that. Um, and uh, yeah, being being center of Paris also has the super advantage of the fact that um, world leaders um, in whatever sector, government, uh, uh, international organizations, but also to the, the, the private sector as well, they come through Paris to the center to meet with whether it's the president of the republic, the prime minister, or indeed uh, um, international organizations like the OECD or UNESCO, which are, are just a short um, um, uh, 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 walk away from, from where we are. Um, and that means that we can actually invite um, these leading people to come and speak and exchange and interact with our students, which is another huge um, a part of what we think is an important part of our offer um, to students is that in addition to obviously your studies is having these other opportunities to engage through events and other activities um, with uh, um, the current leaders of today. A green and quiet campus at the heart of a beautiful city. Thank you, Marc. Now let's talk about innovation in teaching methods. An important component of PSIA are the regional and thematic concentrations. Could you tell us about those regional and thematic concentrations? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, and I'm glad you, you, you come back to this question. So earlier I introduced the, uh, the eight master's programs that we offer um, at PSIA. And I said that those are essentially like your majors, uh, but there's the opportunity to complement those with concentrations or minors. Um, and essentially we have five uh, thematic, uh, uh, sorry, five regional concentrations, of course, which cover the main um, uh, parts of the world from the Americas to Europe, the Middle East, Africa, and Asia. We also have 12 um, thematic concentrations, um, and they cover uh, areas like diplomacy, global risks, global health, um, but also to methodology. There's a whole range of those, which, of course, you can find on, on our website. Um, and the idea is that you have um, 
half of your studies are essentially in your major, so the major degree um, program that you uh, have chosen, and then you can choose up to two concentrations depending on precisely the program that uh, you're in and whether it's a, a standalone degree here at PSEA or combining with one of our dual degrees. We have 10 dual degrees um, internationally, four dual degrees with other French universities, and in those programs students do one concentration. But the, the, the principle is that students have a choice. They have a choice to tailor their curriculum, their program study, to best meet what their career objectives are going to be. So we understand those concentrations allow a flexible curriculum allowing students to tailor their degree to their career goals. Thank you, Mark. Now let's have a word with Pietro. Pietro, thank you very much for being with us. You are a Master in International Energy Transitions student. You are originally from Chile where you did your undergraduate studies. How did you first learn about Sciences Po? What made you decide to apply? Hello, Adrian. Hello, Mark. Thank you for having me. So I first heard about Sciences Po through an integrated year program that Sciences Po has with my home university back here in Chile. And if I'm being honest with you, I, I hadn't heard much about Sciences Po at first, but once I started doing some research, it was really easy to find how good of a university Sciences Po is. Um, it, it's top three QS ranking in international affairs and politics, and this really caught my attention. So once I started doing some research and really looking into the different programs that SIA has, uh, it just seemed like the logical next step in my, in my career and academic path. You're doing the Master's in International Energy Transitions. Uh, can you tell us about your Master and the, the different courses and maybe a favorite one you have? Of course. So the Master in International Energy Transitions, it's a bit of a mix between energy economics and energy geopolitics, innovation. Um, and even though the, the focus is, of course, in the energy transition, so in renewable energies, um, it still includes uh, fossil fuels and critical minerals and every issue that you must understand uh, in, in order to, to know how the whole energetic, the global energy system works. Um, there's courses such as energy economics, there is a Dilemmas of Energy Transition, which is actually my favorite course till this date. And it is taught by Professor Giacomo Luciani, who we're also very lucky to have as our scientific advisor. Mark mentioned the new campus at the heart of Paris. Let's have a word about campus life. I understand you are pretty much involved in uh, student activities. Uh, what can you tell us about um, the student activities you've been doing at PSIA? So um, there's plenty of student associations. There's for every single interest that students might have. You have from um, sustainable activism to photography. You have many different associations. Um, I am serving currently as the master representative, so I'm in the student association. And I would recommend everyone to get involved. Uh, be part of something outside of your classroom, connect with people from other masters, and really uh, take advantage of the campus, which is really nice. It's, I feel like it's a bit of a, like walking in a park that also has classrooms and a cafeteria. Like it's really big, it's really green, and I would uh, advise students or future students to really get involved in, in student life outside of the classroom. Zingshan mentioned the internships she is and will be doing in both Ivory Coast and uh, Austria. What contributions has the school made to your own professional project? So uh, I'm a, a first year student, so I, I have just finished my first semester and we, we have already been contacted by a couple of, of leader indust uh, industry leaders. Um, we have this talks called the energy talks, which we have a different industry leader every week. And after these talks, we have a, the opportunity to really connect with these persons. And, and we have actually been offered a couple of internship um, opportunities. And also uh, the, the workshops that SIA provides uh, regarding your CV, regarding interviews. I think this is a really great asset and it has really contributed to my own personal search for uh, an internship. Thank you very much, Pietro, for your testimonial. 
Now back to Mark. Mark, uh, both Zingshen and Pietro mentioned their professional projects. How does Pia more broadly prepare for professional life? Great. Uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm glad you asked this answer because we know um, that as a professional school that students come to study with us, of course, um, to, to get an education, to get uh, uh, deeper knowledge of, the, of, of their fields of interest. Um, but as the dean mentioned, skills and experience is also a key part of what we're um, providing to students as, as part of this. Um, so in terms of skills, we, we, we ensure that in each course, but also to in addition to the courses, students have the chance to develop additional skills. Um, we're partners, for example, with the Paris Peace Forum which has been going on now since uh, um, uh, 2020, uh, 2018 rather. Um, so it's uh, six years we've been partners with it. And every year, um, literally hundreds of CS students go to volunteer um, at the forum. And, and we've been very clear that their involvement should not be um, uh, things that we, we, you would pay someone to do, like check coats or, or, or just point people in direction, but actually graduate level um, roles. So um, they're, they're there to help manage the, some of the events that are going on. Um, they're there to be participating in them um, and also to, to liaise with world leaders, to, to guide them around, to make sure that they have a, a sense of understanding of, of what's going on and, and, and how to connect. So that's just an example of the kinds of opportunities we do. We have our own uh, Youth and Leader Summit, which we have every year. And again, students at the, very, at the heart of organizing the event, uh, um, engaging with the speakers in that that way, that's part of it as well. Um, as uh, as Shincheng mentioned, um, she's doing her third semester internship, which is a requirement of her program. Um, you do one semester outside the walls of Sciences Po specifically to gain additional experience. A, a, a large majority of students do it as, a, as an internship, about 85%, but we also have some students who do it as a master's thesis, which is another form of preparation for the professional world, being able to learn methodology, conduct a research project, write a paper um, as part of it. Um, that's also part of it. And of course, in some countries, it's a prerequisite for working in the public service. Um, we also, in SIA itself, um, uh, there was a mention of the Central Sciences Po Career Services, which of course um, has regular career fairs. They provide support to students in terms of checking their CVs, helping them prepare applications um, in this way. But within SIA, our biggest advantage is that we have obviously experience, um, expert knowledge about the sectors that specifically are of interest to our students based on the degree programs and the concentrations we offer. And therefore, we uh, engage both our faculty, of course, who come from and are currently working in these sectors, but also to our alumni. We continue to engage with our alumni after graduation. They come back both to share their experiences with current students, but more recently, we've also introduced a mentoring scheme where all of their second year students at PSEA are mentored by a previous graduate to help them with A, um, refining what it is that they want to do in terms of upon graduation, and of course, giving them both the experience and tips on how best to pursue those paths. So we do a lot. A lot, a lot, and we understand that preparations for working life begin right at the start of a student's journey at the Paris School of International Affairs. You mentioned sectors. In which sectors and for what positions are graduates recruited? Great. Um, just as our students come from around the world, they also, upon graduation, they also go back out into the world um, in its entirety. And of course, it's not linear. Students who come from one country don't necessarily go back there. Our French students, for example, are just as keen as others to get an international experience upon graduation. And so many of them will go and travel internationally. And some of our international students want to stay in Paris and work for the international and other organizations based here. I mentioned already UNESCO and OECD just as examples. But of course, many students um, both during their time with us as internships, but also to upon graduation, um, want to work for um, their foreign uh, service. Um, so working in embassies or consulates abroad, um, they, many of them will take the, um, the, the if it's required, um, exams to enter the, 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 the public service, in particular Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Um, so our students work as diplomats. Um, our students work um, as risk analysis and indeed all different types of analysis. They work slightly more in the private sector um, than in the public sector or international sphere, although those numbers are, are more or less 50-50. Uh, and they work for a whole range of organizations, international organizations in the UN system, but also international NGOs, more local NGOs, and of course, as I've said, the private and the public sector as well, um, in a whole range of roles. Really, the what 
what I think the most important thing, going back to the previous question, is we allow students to move to where they want and where they've defined they want to get here. And so in a way, if a student has an idea for a job, we'll try to help them secure something in that field. Graduates find jobs in a variety of positions and sectors. Thank you, Mark. Now let's have a word with Joanne. Joanne, thank you for being with us, with us as well. You are a Master in Human Rights and Humanitarian Action graduate. You work as part of the Finequity team at the World Bank. You are originally from Kenya. Could you tell us what makes the Master in Human Rights and Humanitarian Action stand out as something special for you? Thank you so much. Um, my Master's uh, the Human Rights Program is relevant in our daily lives, and I believe this emphasizes the exposure to real world cases. Hence, it has helped in contributing meaningful and uh, in addressing pressing challenges globally. So that's why I believe that Master's in Human Rights has been so helpful in navigating also in my career path. Over to you. You work at the World Bank. Could you tell us about the position you hold today? Yeah, sure. Um, I work at the World Bank being part of the Finiquity team, which is also a community of practice. And my responsibility revolves around projects of women economic empowerment through financial inclusion. And this position enables me to apply the knowledge and skills I acquired during my students for, and uh, particularly in areas of gender and human rights. Both Zingshen, thank you, Joanne, both Zingshen and Pietro mentioned how they could build their professional project during their time at PSIA. What were the stages of building your own professional project during your master's at PSIA? Uh, this is such an interesting question. In addition to what they said, for me, I believe during my time at Students for I underwent three stages. First was through self-assessment on literally at uh, analyzing what are my passions, my strengths, especially in the realm of international affairs. And secondly, I went through vigorous academic exploration, and I'm grateful because PSIA gave us the flexibility to choose courses based on our career path. For example, for me, it was on gender, advocacy, and also foreign policy. And lastly, I underwent through the, the various activities that PSIA offers, thanks to the PSIA careers, that encourages students to volunteer. For example, I worked with the Paris Peace Forum and UN Women Generation Equality Forum. And in addition to that, I was part of the advisory committee for the Youth and Leaders Summit <laughs> during my time. You mentioned the Youth and Leaders Summit and the Paris Peace Forum that Mark mentioned as well. You were involved in a whole range of international events at PSIA. Uh, it, it sounds like it was a great contribution to your career. What other contributions did the school make to your career? Thank you so much. Having done my first year uh, of Science Sport uh, during COVID, uh, it would be so unfair not to mention the student fairs, which being part of the international student team, they really helped us in trying to navigate through throughout the time and also the experts from Science Sport, the, the lecturers who are understanding and flexible and guiding us throughout the course. Secondly, I would say um, that the idea of the, the student body really interesting because during my cohort at Human Rights and Humanitarian Action, most of us were international students. So this helped me to enhance my multicultural exposure and experience, which I'm currently using while I'm working at my current position. So. Now, final question, Joanne. Did you have a favorite class at the Paris School of International Affairs? Absolutely a lot, but two of them stood out. Uh, documenting, reporting and campaigning on human rights by Salvatore and uh, Gender and Conflict by Elizabeth Mato. These courses stood out to me because the dis discussions and assignments challenged me to think critically and apply theoretical concepts in the real world scenarios and overall in transforming, ex in, it was a transformative experience that really exemplified the quality of education at PSEA. Over Th to you. Thank you very much, Joanne, jo for finding the time to be with us today. Our final guest today is Marta. Marta, you are a Master in International Economic Policy graduate. You work as analyst at consulting firm ECA, Economic Consulting Associates, in London. Uh, you are originally from Italy. Could you tell us about the position you hold today? What is your daily work like? Hi, thank you. Greetings from London. Yes, yeah, so as you mentioned, I work as an analyst at uh, energy consulting um, 
firm called Economics Consulting Associates. And um, I work on different projects and aspects related to energy economics, mainly decarbonization and energy access in key areas, mainly uh, Central Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. And I have to say that as an analyst, I do a variety of different tasks and apply a variety of different skills that I developed at CMSPO from doing background research and analysis on aspects such as a country's residential sector emissions or grid extension issues in a specific location. I also am developing models and projections for energy efficiency technologies uptake, uh, electric vehicles car uptake and uh, estimate costs and emission savings. And I have to say, CMSPO really equipped me with the knowledge and the skills for this. Was being a consultant something you wanted to do from day one at Sciences Po, or is it something you matured along uh, the way during your master's program? Uh, what were the stages of building a professional project at the Paris School of International Affairs? Thank you for the question. Actually, um, I didn't know that consulting was what I was going to get into after graduation. Um, when I joined uh, PSIA as an M1, it was during COVID. And during that time, when I was interfacing, although online with exceptional peers and students and um, professors, I realized I wanted to graduate with two key things, uh, from some career experience and professional experience, and also some research skills. And I was able to do this with Sciences Po. Uh, I took a gap year where I worked in consulting and um, I understood uh, what topics, what areas and what skills I wanted to develop. And then during the first semester of my second year, I did the research thesis, which um, would allow me to, um, if I returned to Italy at some point, also work in the public sector, because in Italy, in the public sector and in mainland Europe, they uh, we're often required to have written a thesis during our masters. So. Um, these were the key two things that I think uh, really um, allowed me and Sciences Po to build my professional project and also understand that I wanted to put my skills and knowledge to good use. So both internship and uh, the, master, the, the thesis were contributions to, to building your professional project. Apart from those, what contributions did the school make to your professional project? I would have to say two key things. The first, um, I was able to use some of Sciences Po's career services like CV and motivated motivation letter revision and workshops, which were particularly helpful uh, during my application phases. And the second thing, I would have to say that Sciences Po is a great forum for networking. Um, even my first year, although it was online, I was able to network and meet with exceptional students who have already had career experience in the past, but also professors who are uh, pioneers in uh, specific academic or professional fields where I was able to learn from and understand more about my career prospects. Now, looking back at your uh, Sciences Po years, what would be the best memory you have uh, of uh, your time as a student at PSIA? I would have to say definitely being in Paris during the second year. Um, as Mark mentioned, the campus is right in the heart of Paris and it's just such a dream. It's beautiful and it's a great place to meet people and network. And in particular, I was able to volunteer at a couple of student associations. Um, I volunteered at the student run cafe uh, with the Pave Association and just that time um, practicing my French, learning, uh, learning more skills in coffee, coffee making, but also participating to the student community in this way, making new friends was um, a great, great memory that I have. It sounds like you had a great time. Thank you very much, Marta. Now is the time for our Q&A session, questions and answers. Thank you, dear viewers, for the numerous questions you've been asking in the chat module of this YouTube live session. We're going to go on and start with the first question from our viewers, a question from Isha. Um, and, uh, and, and, and ask to Pietro, what let me read it out loud for you. What is the average class size of each of the program? Um, what is the average class size for the Masters in International Energy Transitions? Pietro, would you like to answer that question? Yes, so in, in, our, in our Masters, we're about 54 students. 
and we have many we have classes that are specific to our program and we have some people from other masters who took the environmental policy concentration so energy specific courses i could say would be between 40 and 50 students so it's not not a huge class it's i think it's perfect it's a good slide so yeah, you both have uh, uh, big classrooms and amphitheaters with uh, with many uh, schoolmates and and also smaller size uh, uh, classes. Now a question for Mark. Um, now we understand all programs offered at PSIA are fully taught in English. We have a question from Fabiana. What are some of the constraints for non-French speakers in terms of access to extracurricular courses, networking? internships, etc. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for the question. I, first of all, I, I should add um, for clarity that we do offer some courses in French um, at PSIA, and we offer at least one uh, um, course in Spanish in our Latin America or America's concentration. So, I mean, we we, we celebrate language, we know how important it is, but we also know that many of our students come already with a, a number of languages already mastered. So, but for the just to clarity, for the program itself, English is the only language we require for uh, admission, uh, fluency. Um, in terms of French, um, uh, as we've heard uh, already, um, French isn't a barrier. Um, obviously, students come, uh, and whether you have a basic level of French or a more advanced level of French, there's an opportunity for you to practice it. Um, one of the things that we offer to our students at, at PSIA is actually pre-sessional, so both before the fall semester and before the spring semester, some intensive French language training. So if you want to brush up a bit or uh, deepen a little bit your language skills, we, we offer that as well. In terms of it being a barrier, I would say that it isn't. Of course, um, with the, uh, I think it was uh, Pietro who mentioned, there are uh, literally uh, hundreds of associations that students can join at, at Sciences Po. Um, of course, many of them will be in French, uh, dominant by, uh, by, by French students, but there are also many, many um, uh, associations that are taking place in multiple languages, not even English or French, but perhaps in other languages as well. Um, so there is something for everyone. Um, obviously, things like sports, uh, uh, culture, um, again, there are opportunities for doing so. Um, Paris is, of course, an international city. Um, uh, many, many tourists come and, and, and survive without any problem. So uh, we don't think of it as a barrier. Of course, we will encourage and enable those who have limited French to practice it a little bit. And, uh, um, and we, we heard the, the story about working in a cafe is just one example as a way to practice um, or learn a little bit more. So um, please don't think of it in any way as being a, um, a barrier. Um, we'll, there's always something, uh, lots, of, lots and lots of options for you to, to do. Now a question from Ahmet about prerequisites to apply to the Masters in Human Rights and Humanitarian Action. Ahmet is asking, I'm interested in the Human Rights and Humanitarian Action Master. I am a philosophy student. Am I eligible for the program? Maybe, Joanne, you did follow the Masters in Human Rights and Humanitarian Action. Could you tell us what undergraduate degree you did prior to the Masters? And maybe if your schoolmates doing the same master did um, similar or different or very various different types of uh, undergraduate programs. Thank you so much for the question. Uh, for me, I did, uh, I had a background in, in international studies from Strathmore University. And most of my friends or rather my classmates, they didn't come from any arts or prior requirements. So I, I believe that Masters in Human Rights is open to everyone because human rights, human rights is something that we face every day in all sectors. So uh, we had, I had classmates who are from medicine. I had classmates who are from economics. So I believe it will be of your interest if you're interested in doing human rights and it's, you will literally love the, the, the courses. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joanne. As, as, we, as we said previously, uh, PSIA welcomes students from every academic background. There are no disciplinary prerequisites to apply to, uh, to our master's programs. Uh, a question for Zing Shen. Um, let me read it out loud for you. How did your studies at PSIA change your perspective about international affairs and especially development? Zing Shen, you mentioned how you are currently working uh, with development issues. Did your studies at PSIA change your perspective on this typical subject? 
Yes, yes. Um, this is a very interesting question. So um, I think first, um, as we mentioned already before, um, staying in SIA, learning in SIA, bring you closer, much closer to the world of international affairs. We have Paris Peace Forum conference and events in OECD. And also very interestingly, we have um, a PSIA event every week. Uh, we have special guests from all over the world to um, to present what is really happening on the world. So um, I think in CI, I learned that international affairs are not just in the theory or on the TV or in the books. It is something really happening around us. And we as individuals, we can really uh, make some change. Uh, we can make a difference by, by our own hands. I think it's very important. And also, apart from that, I really want to mention that uh, um, in SIA, I think I have a I have more critical thinking on the um, global system because we have so many um, so many insights from all over the world from the field. We have professors from the field, and um, we have internship that we can choose to work all over the world. Like I'm now learning new things every day in Cote d'Ivoire, so. Uh, um, I now I know that apart from development aid, international development has lots of opportunities. We have private sectors, we have social innovation, we have all different um, tools of finance uh, to support development. And also, like the, the 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 global system now, like we we should definitely make a change. And it's Sia that tell me. Uh, what can we work on and uh, why it just look like this today. So, yeah, I think Psia teach me a lot on that. Thank you very much, Zingshen. Uh, a question about the thematic and regional concentrations uh, from Nika. Nika is asking, can all the concentrations be added to each of the majors or is the choice major specific? Now, Mark mentioned uh, about those concentrations uh, earlier. Marta, would you like to tell us, as you follow the Master in International Economic Policy, uh, what are the concentrations you chose? And maybe, Mark, afterwards you can um, explain how, how both masters and concentrations are articulated. Yep. Sure, thank you for the question. Um, I, uh, so my master's was in international economic policy and my original concentration was Africa and my thematic concentration was um, global economy. So although my master's was already economics focused, I was able to pick the global economy conservation uh, um, concentration to, um, in a way, focus even more to have a, an additional kind of strengthening of my economic policy um, expertise in a way um, with the concentration. So you are free to, um, to, to follow the same concentrations of your master. So if you're doing a humanitarian action um, and you want to do the human rights concentration, I think you can do that. Some, um, some concentrations, uh, some courses within the concentration might be already, might be already covered within your master. But um, there is so much option that every concentration has so many courses that you can definitely um, keep that concentration and continue exploring with different courses. Thank you very much, Marta. Mark, would you like to add something? Maybe I'll just confirm that uh, there's no restriction. Um, student, irrespective of which master's program you are, you have access to the full range of concentrations, uh, regional and thematic. Um, and of course, uh, the the... The purpose of this is, as I said earlier, is so students can really tailor their program of study to fit their particular interest and their particular career path. And so we allow that flexibility. Thank you very much, Mark. Our information session is now coming to an end. Thank you very much for attending. We hope that we were able to answer the questions you had about the Paris School of International Affairs. Thank you very much, Mark, for being with us. My pleasure. Thank you for, to our viewers as well. And thank you for such a great student and graduates panel. You guys were great. Thank you very much for finding the time to be with us today. Marta, Xinxen, Pietro, and Joan. Um, we thank you again for watching and hope to see you soon at Sciences Po. Thank you again and goodbye. <laughs>